guys and gals and welcome once again to the D4E channel. Today we're talking about adjustable cam gears. I bought this set when I was rebuilding my engine for the first time and back then, I'm ashamed to admit this, but back then I didn't really know how these things work at all and I bought them because of their looks. I did read and people did tell me you need these to make the most out of your setup if you have upgraded camshafts, which I do have, so I bought them because of that too. But what I was really looking forward to was actually taking photos of my engine, you know, with these things on it. And it was only after quite a while, you know, quite a bit of research and a lot of trial and error that I figured out, you know, how to make the most of these things. And today I want to share that knowledge with you in a nice little condensed package of useful information. But before that, I want to say just a few words about these particular cam gears, you know, in case you're in the market for some cam gears. I think you should definitely consider these ones. Uh, if you Google images for 4AG cam gears, you know, you're not going to see these ones. Which I think is a bit of a shame because I had these for over a year now and during that time, I have to be honest, they have performed flawlessly. Uh, I even, you know, due to my lack of knowledge, I did abuse these a bit because when I first got them, I used to over tighten these bolts, the adjustment bolts, because I thought, you know, the cam gear would slip if I don't tighten it super strongly and the bolts took it real well, there was no issues at all. Another thing that's important is that these do not chew up your timing belt. There are actually some aftermarket cam gears that do that and we all know how bad that could be. I really also like their you know understated design. They look really nice without being you know too flashy or whatever. And another really important thing about them is actually their price. The price tag on these is really reasonable. They are $160 which is compared to let's say HKS cam gears which are $360 or Tomei cam gears which are I think $290 is a very big price difference actually. And these while Techno Toy Tuning may not be a brand name as famous as HKS or Tomei, they perform just as well and I think at the end of the day that's what really matters. You want a product that looks nice and performs well and has a nice price tag. So if you're in the market, definitely do consider these. There's a link in the video description, so go check it out. Okay, that's enough love and praise for my cam gears. Now let me show you how they actually work. Now, as their name suggests, adjustable cam gears allow you to adjust your cam timing on the fly. Now, unlike stock cam gears, which are not only uglier than these ones, uh, they can be adjusted without any you know additional work needing to be done on your engine all you gotta do is loosen these three bolts and move your crankshaft you know so rotate your engine and you can adjust your cam timing now as you can see stock gears do not have any way of adjusting it and the only way you could potentially adjust them is to remove the timing belt and remove the cam covers you know and then then move the cam and then put it all back together and if you're not happy with it you have to remove the timing belt again, which as you can see is not very reasonable. Okay, as I said, adjusting is super simple. You need one of these and you loosen the bolts. You don't need to loosen them a lot, just a bit is enough. Okay, what you do then is you take your big tall wrench with the appropriate socket and you rotate the engine. As you will see, the timing belt will move and the outer ring of the cam gear will also move but the camshaft, the inner ring, will stay fixed. Now let's see that in action. Okay, there we go. Adjustment one way, adjustment the other way. Now let me show you that course up. Now watch, watch what happens. There we go, adjustment one way. All I'm doing is rotating the crankshaft, adjustment the other way. As you can see, this cam is just moving normally, but you're actually adjusting this one. And adjusting, you know, intake and exhaust is you do it the same way. Adjusting this way, as you can see, this line moves this way. This little thing moves this way. This is advancing your cam timing. 
when you're when you're adjusting the other way. So when you're adjusting from the center that way, so this way, this is called retarding your cam timing. Since we're now working on the intake cam, advancing cam timing on the intake actually means that the intake valve will open earlier. Retarding cam timing on the intake means that the intake valve will open later. The same thing goes for the exhaust. From the perspective of the camshaft that we can see here, it's actually easier to explain what cam time really is. And what it is, it's the position of your camshaft lobes in relation to the position of your piston down there in your cylinder. Now, that's important for any internal combustion engine because it determines a lot of things. And by playing with the cam timing, you can actually play with the power band of your car and you can move the power higher up or lower down or you know do a bunch of other things that I'm going to explain to you. And since this is an dual, you know, a double overhead cam engine, we can play with more things than somebody who has, you know, a single overhead cam engine or you know who has a push rod engine and also has a single cam. So and what we can play with is something called lobe angle separation or LSA. And what that is, it's the relationship between the two lobes of the intake and the exhaust cam. Now the best way to explain the lobe angle separation is actually to you know put it on paper. Now let's imagine we're looking at the engine from the front and here we have Let's say this is our intake cam lobe and here we have our exhaust cam lobe. Now let me let me draw them, you know, let me draw them like this. There's our exhaust. Okay, and there's our intake. Now this is not perfect, but it's going to be good enough for me to explain to you how low angle separation works. Now, as you can probably guess by its name, it's the angle of the separation of the two lobes. So it's actually, it's actually this angle right here. And how you play with it is you actually adjust the cam lobes either away from each other or towards each other. And that makes a lot of difference to the way your engine will perform. Okay, now there's two things you can do to the lobe separation angle. Now, number one is moving the, the cam lobes away from each other, and that's increasing the lobe separation angle. And number two is moving the cam lobes towards each other, and that's decreasing the lobe separation angle. Now, number one is, it's more, you know, let's say, a tame engine and number two is more of a racy engine. Now uh, everybody wants racy but it, these, this has some drawbacks and this does have some benefits so the, the best way to figure out what's the best setting for you is actually to go on a dyno. You can do, you can, you know, you can play with your rope separation angle you know, by yourself, driving around you know, and changing different settings and trying to get a feel for it with your, with your butt dyno. But that is definitely not as reliable. You can maybe get it close, you know, to the best figure, but nothing can replace a dyno when it comes to setting your cam gears, you know, to the best possible setting for your engine. So now let's talk about example one. Uh, increasing lobe separation angle. What it does, it's actually it makes your engine, you know, uh, develop its maximum power over a broader, you know, part over a bigger chunk of its of its RPM band. But what it does is actually it does reduce the maximum horsepower figure and it does raise the torque to a higher RPM but it also reduces the maximum torque. What it also does is it, 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 it you know, increases your idle vacuum which means your idle quality is going to be nicer, your car is going to be idling you know, almost like a, let's say like a stock engine. What it also does is, is it decreases the chance of engine knock. Now it's called the, now the more racy setting, which is moving the cam lobes towards each other. 
it actually makes your uh, engine develop its maximum power over a much smaller you know uh, rpm band but it does raise the maximum horsepower figure and it also moves the torque to a lower rpm but it does increase the maximum torque so you get a here you get a narrow power band and here you get a broad power band well what this actually do does you know the the racy setting what it also does do is that it, it's going to reduce idle vacuum and it's going to decrease your idle quality you know and your car is going to be idling you know not as nice but it does you know sound kind of cool so you know those cars that idle like that's what you get by you know increase decreasing your lobe separation angle uh, also but uh, moving the the intake and exhaust lobes closer to each other and decreasing those separation angle does it also decreases your piston to valve clearance so if you have an interference engine be very careful with this because if you do play with this too much you know and decrease the lobe separation angle too much you can actually make your you know piston hit your valves and cause catastrophic failure so definitely do be careful with this so that's that's it when it comes to lobe separation angle which is definitely the number one thing when it comes to you know using your adjustable cam gears another thing that I should probably mention is that you can in fact install adjustable cam gears on your stock cams and you won't be losing anything with that but you also won't be gaining anything the only thing that you could gain is a lesson in you know understanding better how your engine works and how your cam timing works and everything else but the combination of stock cam gear and stock camshaft has been set up by the, fact, by the manufacturer to work you know, the best possible way over the widest RPM range. Uh, you need adjustable cam gears only once you actually install more aggressive camshafts. Because in that case, if you do not have adjustable cam gears, the stock cam gears will be limiting the potential of your aggressive camshafts. So, uh, without the risk of making this video way too long, I'm going to actually end the adjustable cam gear lesson here. Because I think this is uh, pretty much what the average car guy needs to know, you know, in order to make the most out of adjustable cam gears. There's of course a lot more information out there and a lot more research that you can do. Uh, if you have, you know, any other questions, feel free of course to, you know, hit me up in the comment section and I'll answer, you know, to the best way of my, let's say, relatively limited abilities. So, I guess that's it, that's it for today. Uh, definitely uh, if you did like the video, if you do like the channel, uh, I would appreciate if you, you know, share, like, comment and subscribe. That definitely helps me make, make more videos, you know, grow this channel and, you know, get more people on board for this, you know, little journey we're having. So, uh, stay tuned. There's also going to be more videos coming up. There's going to be some fun stuff. There's going to be some, you know, fun builds I'm doing. I'm doing something interesting with this engine. So, definitely look out for that as well. So. I guess on that note, it's time to end today's video. Again, thanks for watching and see you soon on the B4A channel.